One of the most important things that people need to understand about the civil rights movement is first that this was about human rights. That this was about one group of people being made to feel that they were less than human being taught from the cradle to the grave that they were insignificant in the grand scheme of life and that nothing that they did could ever change that. And I want people to understand that this is also about ordinary people developing the capacity to do extraordinary things. Ella Baker once said that strong people don't need strong leaders, that they can lead themselves. And I think the story of civil rights in the United States is a story about ordinary working everyday people being sick and tired of being sick and tired and finding something within themselves to speak out against injustice and to stand up for righteousness, to stand up for what was right and to be willing to pay the price for engaging in these activities even if it meant death. In 1961, African-American students from Friendship Junior College in Rock Hill, South Carolina, walked a mile to stage a sit-in at a segregated lunch counter. Their unconventional mission was to be put in jail and then refuse to pay or accept bail to cause a financial burden on local authorities. Though often discussed, this jail no-bail strategy was first done by the Friendship Nine and was replicated many times throughout the South. Until recently, the Friendship Nine was not recognized for their important role in South Carolina's and the nation's civil rights movement. The way this, this got started, I think, was back, probably uh, back in the late um, 1900s, 1997, when the uh, McCrory's closed down. Uh, the building was, was open. There was some concern that we would lose uh, the lunch counter at that time. I think up until that time, there was not a whole lot of notoriety that was coming to the Friendship Nine. But uh, at the time, I was serving on the Culture and Heritage Museum Board. And uh, if you uh, knew anything about the turn of the century, everybody was trying to decide what was the biggest thing that happened in the previous century. And after, a, uh, after several interviews, after uh, several hours and days of research, they, they came up with the idea that probably the most significant thing historically that happened in York County and in Rock Hill was the Friendship Nine and the beginning of the uh, civil rights uh, era here in South Carolina. So the impetus of the project was the Friendship Nine and the vacating of their sentences for trespassing. And so, you know, we looked at the video where you know, the judge opened up the docket book, and the idea of opening up the book um, was the big idea for the walkway. This walkway allows people to reflect on the past. It offers an opportunity to use the past as a springboard to the future that can transform a community. I think it's very important, you know, that, that there is this history here and that we don't forget about the history. This happened in 1961, but there are things happening today in our world. And, you know, the idea of turbulence and obstacles and some of these symbols that we have in this walkway is just as appropriate, you know, today as it was back in 1961. Today, we live in a time of renewed racial tension, and reminders are only the first step to progress. I think that this is a, a wonderful um, contribution to the cause, but we cannot lose sight that it is a, a, a marker, so to speak. It is a, um, a visual aspect of it, that we've got to go even deeper than that. I think we've made tremendous progress since MLK, um, but I think we've still got a long way to go. I think this election season has, has pointed out the divides that still exist within our country the intolerance that's still out there. Um, so I don't know that it's a challenge that we'll ever succeed at completely, but it's something that we've got to keep striving for. Change is hard. People don't accept change as readily as, you know, they should. But then you shouldn't expect them to either, because when you brought up one way, and that's the only way you know, until you get involved with the people to sit down and talk to them, you know, 
and just have a conversation. You don't have to talk about nothing. You just talk and you find out that everybody's the same. I think our conversations need to be stronger. I think we need to be able to sit down and cross lines and be able to look at your point of view, look at my point of view and find that common ground because we've always heard that we're more alike than we are different and we've got to come to that understanding and really start moving towards that. So yes, we have gone far, but we've got a long way to go until we can really start connecting beyond color, beyond race, beyond gender, beyond all those things and really sit down and have conversations with each other. Martin Luther King Jr. and others from the civil rights movement of the 1960s knew their work was just beginning. Even today, the movement continues, which is why many agree that connecting the history of the 60s to our youth is more important now than ever. History always repeats itself, but see, when it repeats itself, most of the time it's worse than it was the first time. So we pray that what happened doesn't happen again, that we don't want nobody to have to go to jail or have to do anything along that line. I always tell children that you can't understand where you're going until you understand where you came from. And when we learn our history, it really makes us better prepared and equipped to find great things in our future. To be honest with you, especially with our young children, our young, young adults, I'm not so sure they, they even know what Dr. Martin Luther King's vision was all about. So if you don't understand what the vision is about, was about how can you appreciate where we are? And that's where we as a community have dropped the ball in terms of educating our youth, all of our youth, about what that vision was about and how they connect to that the vision and the role they can play and making the changes that need to be made. We never imagined, you see, that this whole process of striving for, uh, uh, in terms of achieving freedom, uh, that we have actually arrived there. It's an ongoing process. So I think it's important to acknowledge, you know, again, where we have been and where we are today and our hopes for the future. The Freedom Walkway is more than a stroll through history. It is a tool for education and a call to action for all who visit. We are the MLKs um, and you know just from my work in social justice and civil rights uh, we are the voices. Every single one of us has the components that made MLK who he is and what he was. Not to say that any of us can even say that we are such an iconic figure as MLK but we all have pieces within us that can help set the foundation for creating change. We are change agents. Every single one of us inside of our heart, inside of our head we are change agents and so when we start approaching it that way we can create the change that MLK did and then become even greater change agents than anyone's ever seen. We need a leader in the White House that's going to bring the people together. Forget about hostilities and past things we have done or past things you say and just say look we all America we're going to work together. We're going to try to iron out all our problems we got. Whatever it is, we're going to make it one. So we're not going to be just say, I'm just for this person, I'm just for that person. We got to be for everybody. This is looking at us as a nation at this point. And it's the opportunity for all of us to be involved if we choose to. You know, but I can't imagine not choosing to. For me, what I'm going to do is, and any time I approach this walkway, I'm going to stand on, if I enter this end or if I enter that end, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to pause and I'm going to think about the people that went before me and then I'm going to walk through this walkway and then I'm going to look back and think about all the people that I've got to bring with me because we are continuously doing, bringing and moving, changing and showing and that's how our generation, the next generation is going to survive from everything that we were taught. Just like we are standing on the shoulders of so many great people that taught us, we cannot get to the end of that walkway and say we're done. We're not done yet. <laughs>